Hello and welcome to our mathematical analysis of risk, calculating the success probabilities of the attacker. So let's just review how the game works. Uh, before rolling, both you and your opponent must announce the number of dice you intend to roll, and you both must roll at the same time. The attacker can roll up to three dice as long as the attacker has more than three armies in their territory or country. Uh, the defender can roll up to two dice, one die for each army so one army in their territory, one die if they have two armies, two dice. Now for the attacker to win, his or her die must be bigger than the defender's die. So the, the highest attacker's die must beat the highest defender's die. Uh, now this short video will explain a little bit more, it will give you an example of how the game works. When playing Risk, there are six scenarios when you're playing one round. So suppose that the attacker attacks with one and the defender then can defend with one. You both roll the die at the same time. Now in this case, the defender matched the attacker's die and the defender breaks the tie. And so the defender wins this round and the attacker must remove one of his pieces. And we can roll again. This time the attacker wins. Six is bigger than three. So the defender loses a piece. And one more time, the attacker wins again, six bigger than one, so the defender removes one of his pieces. Now that's the first scenario. Again, there are six other scenarios. Another particular scenario is a two-on-one, where the attacker, as long as the attacker has two, um, well, actually three, because you've got to leave one behind. So if the, def uh, the attacker can attack with two, so let's move those up, the defender can attack with one, or defend, I should say, the defender can defend with one or two, depending on how many they have left. So let's suppose that the defender only had one left, means he can only defend with one. And so let's roll. Now what happens is the, the highest attacker die goes against the highest defender die, and there's only one. Now the attacker wins, because five is bigger than one, so the defender loses a piece. All fours. And what's nice about this is the defender will win because the defender tied both of them. And so the attacker loses one. Now the, atta uh, def the attacker does not lose two because the, this defender will kill that attacker. That guy is just left. He just goes back. So it's only a one-on-one. -on -one. So here, if you roll a three-on-two, which the defender can defend with two because we got two pieces. If you roll them, okay, this is the best case scenario for a defender. Uh, so here, take the two highest, the defender wins, so the attacker removes one. Here, the defender also wins, so the attacker moves one. And this one is just to give the attacker the advantage. So let's try it again. Um, so let's say we can roll three again. Now, the attacker will win the first one because five is bigger than four, but the defender will beat the attacker. So this is what we say, just a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so that's how we would play. I didn't go through all six scenarios, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so you've seen how... Uh we can roll the dice at a couple different scenarios. Now this is what we're trying to create, the attacker's probability table. Uh, notice that uh, if you were to play a one-on-one, -on -one, meaning the attacker rolls one die and the defender rolls one die, that your probability of success as the attacker is about 41% or 42%. Now what I do want to show you is if you follow uh, the diagonal down if the attacker and defender start with the same amount of die or dice, sorry, uh, in the beginning when you have fewer pieces, the advantage is to the defender. But notice that around, uh, let's see, five on five, the percentage now slightly, or the advantage slightly to the attacker. And then as as you move on, you actually find like for example, an eleven on eleven is about a fifty-eight percent chance. So as the more pieces the attacker has, the better uh, chance that they have in winning the overall battle. So our objective 
uh, there are three or six different scenarios for each round. Uh, we did a couple of those in the video that you just watched. Uh, we find the probabilities of an attack or an, uh, find the probabilities of an attacker winning each round. And then what we'll do is we'll string all of those rounds together to calculate the probability of winning the entire battle. And this is all going to be done using a tree diagram. There is some very clever math in order to do this too, but we're going to use the tree diagram, so you're going to have to be uh, really good at it. But we'll, we'll do a quick review in a little bit.